welcome to another Warski Live. <laughs> Wrong show, Dev. Wrong show. <laughs> welcome to Dumping with Scrump, guys. I'm I'm SFO. And uh, yes, I'm I'm Scrump. We have a special guest with us today. I'm a little of it, and um, I should post a lot. I post memes, and um, don't Google me. <laughs> <laughs> I just gonna make not? people Google you. Why not? I'm gonna Google you right now. Hold on. I can hear, I can hear like Dev's collective audience fapping as we speak. Oh. Um, <laughs> I just Googled you, and the first thing that came up on my, at least on my search, was the tweet mashup of Lilith Lovett and Donald J. Trump. It says, "Join me for talking about putting things in my butt." <laughs> That's a pretty apt description of who I am. Should we have um, three toilets lined up? We should have three toilets lined up. I, I I don't know. I don't think we should have to share a toilet. <laughs> Actually, I was okay. I I was at a friend's house once. This is like when I was a kid, right? He had this huge bathroom, and there were like two so toilets side by side. <laughs> and I kind of looked at. it, I was like, who the fuck would ever? <laughs> it's so they can sit in the toilet and hold hands. Why? <laughs> who the fuck? <laughs> who would ever use that bathroom? I've only seen pictures of that online in like some weird. Russian bathroom. Anyway, we're not here to discuss toilets, we're here to discuss the Olympics and uh, the reaction therein. Now, I've been following the Olympics. Um, I kind of followed the Olympics when I was in high school, and I just kind of realized I didn't care anymore. <laughs> Especially after I lost um, cable, like, because no, no one no one buys cable anymore. No one, no one gets a cable package. But I realized after cable was done with in my life, I was like, I don't really care about following the Olympics anymore. And so... It still feels like the Vancouver Olympics should be on, and it's been like eight Olympics since then, man. You're an old fucking man, Dev. I'm sorry, you are such an old fucking man. <laughs> How am I an old man if I've ditched cable TV? You win this round. <laughs> that made too much sense, did it? <laughs> I don't like it when you logic me like that. So this year the Olympics were in South Korea. Um, I'm sure somebody won some medals at some point, that doesn't matter. We're here to talk about... North Korea attending the South Korean Olympics and the two countries fielding a unified Korean team. Yeah, pretty massively historical event there. Um, it's been a long time since there's, they, I think, um, Kim Jong-un's sister is like the first top level Korean official in South Korea for a, a, a good number of decades. I, I can't remember the exact figure off the top of my head, but it's been a long ass time since there was that level of, uh, a political figure actually setting foot in South Korea. Um, it's it's kind of been a, a momentous event, and there's been a lot of bullshit surrounding it. I've read that she's uh, part of the regime's propaganda department. She, she is pretty high up there. Yeah, her name's her name's a uh, Kim Yo uh, Kim Yo Jung Jung. God, I'm butchering that. I, it's a simple yeah. name too. I'm like Kim retarded. Yo Jung. You, you fucking yes. racist. Kind of an interesting name. It's like Yo Jung Yo Jung. Oh dear! Let's stop. Let's stop making fun of their fucking names now. Um, I know. We're, we're we're gonna we're gonna end up on an SPLC at this point. I'm good with that. <laughs> hey guys, how many Lees in a Korean phone book? Uh, uh, every one. Oh god. I I I repeat my earlier statement that you are such a fucking old man, Dev. <laughs> Why am I an old phone man? Books? The dad joke. Today. So Kim Jong Un's sister shows up to the Olympics. Um, she's kind of a cutie in that slightly emaciated sort of way. <laughs> wow. Um, she, she has like weirdly sunken cheeks. It she kinda, really does. I think she'd be like really good looking if she was raised in, in South Korea. I gotta. Admit. I would say that she she kind of looks like she's been brought back using necromancy at some point. <laughs> Um, she's she's and, got a slight air of the living dead about her. She really does. In some of her pictures, her eyes look kind of sunken. She also has that weirdly kind of receding hairline that some people who suffer from malnutrition have, if you notice that. And, like... The thing is, I, she's I, she's part of the ruling Kim family, so she will have been relatively well-fed, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, her, her brother's... Her, <laughs> her brother's certainly quite well-fed. In any case, she was at the Olympics, and there was a big hullabaloo in the Western media about this. For some reason, like, CNN 
And like, like, of course, the the shittier rags like like Vox and Buzzfeed and other ones. But even even the larger outlet like CNN, they were basically just fawning all over this woman who is, you know, the sister of a a complete a completely tyrannical dictator who has run his country into the ground. It's like, oh, isn't she isn't she charming? Is isn't isn't her lack of democracy charming? Actually, as surprising as it might sound, Buzzfeed is actually one of the outliers. It's it's like a, we've entered in Bizarro World where BuzzFeed is the one calling out the other major news outlets for their fawning and worship of Kim Jong-un's sister. PSA, uh, Kim Jong-un's sister is not your new fave shade queen. She's the garbage monster. I haven't seen this article. Do you have it? Monster. Yeah, it's in, the, it's in the chat, my dude. I must have missed it. Yeah, so... Shit. I've, I've, I've linked it in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, that's right. Shit, I must have missed this one. I mean, she is a garbage this monster. Is... Though it that, makes that us... line sounds like they, they took it from Anita Sarkeesian's Garbage Human. Yes. <laughs> and then the tagline is, uh, this is my favorite thing about this article, what the hell is wrong with you people? I think that them calling her a garbage monster though makes her sound like Oscar the Grouch. That's all I can think of if someone says garbage monster, like Oscar the Grouch. I, gu I guess good on gu BuzzFeed for doing that, but like, for example, here's, here's CNN's take on it. Seen by some as her brother's answer to American First daughter Ivanka Trump, Kim 30 is not only a powerful member of the Kim Jong-un's kitchen cabinet, but also a foil to the perception of North Korea as antiquated and militaristic. This comparison of of Ivanka Trump to the, the sister of, of Kim Jong-un's is ridiculous. It is pretty ridiculous. She is part of the propaganda machine. She yeah. is part of the North Korean establishment. She's one of the uh, few relatives that um, hasn't been murdered yet, as we saw with his, his, with his uncle, who was, <laughs> what, I, they said it was like ripped apart by dogs or something? It was... It's Jesus. either ripped apart by dogs or, or blown to pieces by an anti-aircraft fire. Apparently that isn't unique either. There's been a few executions in that style. There's some aerial photos of some, like, parade ground where they do that. I mean, I think this is uh, where we go into how fucking, like, awful North Korea... I, as if people, I don't know, as we'll come to later, certain people seem to need to be told that North Korea is fucking awful. But, like, holy shit, guys, it's North Korea. It's like praising the Third Reich for the 1936 Olympics. Oh, 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 but, but everything negative about North Korea is just a evil Western propaganda. I had to look into something really quickly. Um, because I'd actually read some of the writing of Kim Jong-nam, which is King jo Kim Jong-un's brother. Um, yeah, he was killed last year, wasn't he? Yeah. Kim died on, on February 13, 2017 in Malaysia as a result of a suspected chemical, a t chemical attack. And it was an assassination from the North Korean authorities because he was speaking against North Korea. Jesus. Like yeah. I said... One of the few members of his family that hasn't been fucking murdered, so you can tell she's very much in the fold. But in regards to Ivanka Trump, I mean, there's been a lot of criticism in the United States, especially among, among like, lefty publications, of Trump using his daughter Ivanka, and to a lesser extent his, um, his wife Melania, as kind of emissaries or envoys. And, I, I, I don't know, I mean, it, it, seems, it seems to ring a bit, a bit hollow, because hasn't Every president in recent memory used their family in that way. I can't think of one that hasn't done it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, e e even even the Democratic Party is now trying to make Chelsea Clinton a thing, and nobody fucking wants Chelsea Clinton to be a thing. Stop trying to make Chelsea happen. <laughs> Chelsea's not gonna happen. So this weird comparison of Kim Jong Un's sister to Ivanka Trump, it's like th these people forgot that, you know, before the Olympics, they were heavily criticizing Ivanka Trump's political involvement. And now they're like, oh, but it's totally okay when the North Koreans do it. The Ivanka Trump of North Korea cap captivates people in the South. Yeah, thank you, Washington Post. You know what? I guarantee you that, you, you know what's more captivating? All the North Korean athletes and, and cheerleaders, whom I'm sure we'll talk about later, who go back to the North realizing that their country's a fucking shithole because South Korea is amazing. It's like, oh, there's actually food in the supermarkets in South Korea. Holy shit. But it's okay, guys. Uh, you know, Kim Jong-un's sister, like, like threw some shade at Mike Pence. And oh, the yeah. mother of, of that of that person that was uh, fucking murdered by the North Korean regime. So it's all fine, guys. It's, uh, oh, it's, it's so, 
uh, creepy to watch the the verified brigade, the uh, the checkmark retards, just go full yes queen about a North <laughs> Korean official. Like they don't have, well, they don't have any self awareness and they don't have any intelligence. The top brass establishment official. They cheered her on because um, she gave an angry glare at uh, Mike Pence when he clapped at at, at the athletes. Here's CNN. Kim Jong Un's sister is stealing the show at the Winter Olympics. Yeah, dude. If diplomatic dance were an event at the Winter Olympics, Kim Jong Un's sister would be favored to win gold. With a smile, a handshake, and a warm message in South Korea's presidential guest book, Kim Yo Jong has struck a chord with the public just one day into the Pyeongchang Games. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Jesus. Can you not? Can you not print North Korean propaganda, please? There's also the blue check marks and the media's uh, freaking absolute adornment over the army of uh, slave women that they they brought over to cheer for the games. Oh, Have the cheerleaders? Them? Yes, the yes. cheerleaders, where, where they're all donning the same uniform, doing the synchronized cheers that they're so famous for. North Korea has sent more than 200 cheerleaders to the Winter Olympics. The army of beauties has descended on Pyeongchang. That's the Vox article, isn't it? I gotta say... Yes, um, that's the Vox article. They're they're actually all pretty cute, not gonna lie. Dev there with the uh, with a malnutrition uh, yellow fever. Oh, God. <laughs> they were probably well-fed for about a week before coming, being shipped over, because they, they gotta look good for the international camera. They might be part of uh, the glorious leader's personal harem. They could oh, God. Be. God, don't say that. That's uh, that's not a great thought. Well, Ugh. well, dude, didn't uh, uh, Gaddafi have like his his virginal female guards? Oh, I remember that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Check out this picture of them and tell me this is not the North Korean version of Gaddafi's female virginal guards. They probably did find like the most normal looking and uh, best looking people they could to try and represent North Korea. But again, it's it's the media playing into North Korean propaganda. This is what they do. And those people probably have their entire families held hostage back in North Korea so they don't fucking defect. And and that's what I have to I have to wonder like these aren't members of the ruling party. They they seem to be just somewhat regular girls who have been trained to cheerlead. They must be entering South Korea and recognizing how much better that country is compared to their own, how there's not, you know, constant starvation and poverty everywhere in South Korea. Well, the problem is, as well, that a lot of North Koreans are taught that South Korea is basically like a giant garbage pile, and that people literally have to eat rubbish. Like, that's what they're told, that's what they're taught in school, that South Korea is far less developed than they are, and that the war left them ravaged and they never recovered from it. Speaking of never fucking recovering from something, what the fuck is this picture? What is that mask they're all wearing? Oh. That's really creepy. There's some Black Mirror Twilight Zone shit. From the New York Times. Without a word, only flashing smiles, Kim Jong-un's sister outflanked Vice President Mike Pence in diplomacy. Kim Jong-un's sister turn on, turns on the charm, taking Sp Pence's spotlight. I wonder what it was like to be like the two of them just sitting beside each other. It's like, yep, now I'm going to look at each other. Just going to awkwardly... It almost looks like Mike Pence, in this one picture I'm looking at, it almost looks like uh, Mike Pence's wife is like, I wonder if he likes that Asian girl more than me. Oh, God. <laughs> the more you read these articles, the more I thought to myself, maybe McCarthy was right. Hashtag McCarthy did nothing wrong. Yes, it sort of made me think, like, uh, how many of these people in these major news outlets, how many of them were inf infiltrated by... Uh... <laughs> North Korean propagandists. Well, we, we already know that Jeremy Corbyn is actually leaking shit to fucking real communists. Yeah, uh, that was that was up for debate. That that may have been overstated. Nah, I'm pretty uh, sure I, I don't he's wanna... straight up fucking pinko. <laughs> I mean, I think he's a pinko as well. I'm, that's pretty evident. But I, I, the whole spy story, I don't think he's fully proven. Check this out, though. Somebody did a Photoshop of of these tweets, and this is CNN in 1936. Ava Braun is stealing the show at the Summer Olympics, and it's got a picture of Hitler's girlfriend. <laughs> Good shit. That's the thing I was making. It is literally like doing that, though. It's like saying, here's this terrible regime, but look, they put a good face on. Oh, I gotta correct myself here. Uh, I, I found what I was talking about before. 21 members of the North Korean cheerleading team w were sent to a prison camp for the crime of speaking about what they saw after a 2005 performance in South Korea. Jesus. 
Why would you ever want to join that cheerleading team if you're just gonna get thrown in jail for your efforts? From Michael Moore, uh, I just love the whole F Trump opening to the Olympics last night. From all the Koreans coming together under the one blue flag apiece, to Pence and Mother forced to sit in front of Kim's sister, to the popular Korean singers joining together to sing John Lennon's Imagine. Boom! Oh, fucking... Oh, Michael God. Moore, you are the... You are the boomer's boomer. You should be, like, fired out of a cannon into the sun for that fucking tweet. No, no, Michael Moore should be, uh, sent to North Korea for... to be used as rations. <laughs> you could survive a long time on Michael Moore. <laughs> oh, they could. <laughs> He would solve a lot of their hunger problems. Also, a, a great observation someone made that Michael Moore looks like an elderly lesbian now. He, he, <laughs> he really does. does. Or how about that very simplistic um, NBC Olympics tweet where, like, it's, it's a video of, of the the uh, cheerleaders, right? And no punctuation, no, no caps, no links to anything. Just, this is so satisfying to watch. Excellent reporting, NBC. Quality reporting. Yeah, they actually deleted that tweet um, <laughs> because loads of people were making fun of it. Did you see the edits where people put in like pictures of fucking uh, public executions and starvation and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> this is so satisfying to watch. Uh, this Chris Steigel guy, I don't even know who this is, but he seems to be a, an almost someone. He actually had a pretty good take on it. He said, American media last week, Trump's military parade idea reminds us of the displays of authoritarian regimes like North Korea. American media this week. These displays of nationalism and pride from North Korea during the Olympics are awe-inspiring. The apologists lo love to talk about how evil America is, but what they tend to ignore is uh, North Korea is a freaking tiny, tiny nation state. I mean, it, it is highly militarized for the budgets they have, but... It's not a world power. It's it's not the number one world power that's dominating everything. What do you think would happen if North Korea were to have the same power as America? A lot of these people, they do go, they constantly go bash on about how bad America is, and every time you bring up North Korea's crimes, they bring up America's crimes. My argument is just um, America's relatively reserved for the number one world power. <laughs> Are you saying that uh, Trump's nuclear button is bigger than Kim Jong-un's and it actually works? It does. It's a, <laughs> it's a very impressive nuclear button. I, I'd love to run my finger on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sma smash that motherfucking nuke button. Can you imagine a North Korean publication uh, putting out positive articles about US diplomats and uh, US officials and, and family members of US officials? Like, yeah, can you imagine that shit? That's, that on its own is evidence that North Korea is a um, is an absolute tyrannical shithole, especially in comparison to the USA. I mean, the USA isn't perfect, but it does have a degree of press freedom at least, which they are pissing away worshipping a dictatorship. I think I found an example of what you guys are talking about here. here. Here's Abby Martin, and she said, North Korea didn't drop nukes, invade and pillage other countries, carry out coups, start drone wars kill millions of people around the world, or sponsor international terrorism. When is the last time any CNN anchor talked about why the world considers the US the greatest threat? You know what? North Korea would do that if they could. And they do. And, well, at least the last part that you mentioned was sponsoring international terrorism part. Uh, look up North Korean terrorism. Uh, just, just, just Google it. <laughs> just... <laughs> so what you're saying is educate yourself, sweetie? <sighs> <laughs> Sweet. But, you know, it's, it's, <coughs> um, it's just, it's just um, Western propaganda, I'm sure. Are we leaving that in? <laughs> what? The sweetie part? Leaving one. Oh, God. It, it's a good joke, okay? Like yeah, it. yeah, absolutely. It's totally a joke. Um, <laughs> shit. Oh, God. But, Scrump, guess what you won't see in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea? A Nazi rally. Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? I will find Checkmate, them. Checkmate, drunk tarts. I ha actually have this this image here. Okay, it says, "If North Korea is undemocratic, what is the USA?" And then it has like a checklist of all the things that North Korea has that the USA apparently doesn't wow. have. So he here here's the checklist of, of things that North Korea has over the USA: no unemployment, right for work, 
Apartments and houses are free and a human right. No homeless or beggars. Maximal working hours, eight per day. Workers are the owner of the means of production. Right to a place in a nursery and kindergarten. Women and men receive the same payment for the same work. Holiday homes at state expense. Completely free education. Completely free health care. Easy jobs that have a good reputation in society. And... What the fuck? 99.9% .9 alphabetization? What the fuck does that mean? Do they mean uh, literacy? They, yeah, I don't think they know the what the word literacy rate means, because that's a much more elegant way of alphabetization? Yeah. Who talks like... I, I guess a communist talks like that, but... Who wrote this, and um, how much is the North Korean Ministry of Propaganda paying them? Who wrote this, and when can I f drop them out of a fucking helicopter? It, it's actually not from North Korea. It's from an Antifa Facebook page called Anti-Imperialist uh, Action. Oh, good God. Yeah, th this comes from the West. <laughs> this comes from the West. Here's something I realized just actually over the course of recording this. Um, I was reading this article in the Washington Post. It's called, North Korean defectors present a different face at the Olympics. And it's about people who had left North Korea um, and defected to South Korea. And now they're watching, you know, South Korea and, and the Western media fawn all over the North Korean chillers and all this. And this situation really reminds me of the West, especially Europe, but it's, it's happening in the States and Canada too, but mostly in Europe. The West turning its backs on ex-Muslims in, in, in favor of, of Muslim immigrants and Muslim migrants. It's like, yeah, this is kind of a similar situation, isn't it? People who are, who are fleeing autocracy and then winding up that they're, they're in a place where the, the ruling government has decided to switch gears and start basically worshipping the autocracy that they fled from. Like, how dare you flee North Korea? Wasn't it a worker's paradise? How dare you be an ex-Muslim? That, that, that's so Islamophobic of you. Speaking of hot takes, did you guys take a look at the uh, hashtag I stand with DPRK? <sighs> oh god, have they switched over from hands off DPRK now? Mm. Because that was a whole rabbit hole on its own. Yeah, they've been using several of them. You know, there's... One of these countries has dropped hundreds of thousands of bombs in several countries over the last 15 years. The other is North Korea. <laughs> I mean, they're not wrong, but... Do you think... Like... <laughs> well, like what you said, like, like I mentioned, Like I mentioned, uh, swap places. What do you think North Korea would do? Hands off DPRK this Friday. Speak out. No US war in Korea. Korea is one. The problem is with all these people is that you don't know. Like, I like to think some of these people are Poe accounts to make other people look bad, but at this point, you just don't know. You can't tell who's joking and who's a plant from who's serious anymore, especially with this North Korea stuff. Like, once you start defending North Korea, you have a serious problem. You have to get into some absolute mental gymnastics there. The hard left has a good, like, a, a very long record of doing this, um, of defending yeah. North Korea. If you look at, I've got an article here from 2017 from workers.org, uh, which is literally just entitled uh, Hands Off DPRK. Yeah, apparently there was a, there was a protest in Detroit. Um, uh, Anti-war, anti-imperialist activists from several organizations uh, heeded the call by Workers World Party for a demonstration in downtown Detroit on August 16th. I mean, I, I guess Detroit is some of the worst that cap capitalism has to offer. Well, it's, it's some of the worst that mismanagement of cities by Democrats has to offer, but that's a whole other subject. <laughs> <laughs> the heart left's fatuation isn't just with North Korea. It's it's any brutal regime that, that openly that is openly hostile towards America. It's, it's the Cambodias, it's it's the Vietnams, it's the freaking China's, it's it's the Russia before the 2016 election. Yeah, that always struck me as weird that the, the Democrats were so pro-peace with Russia until Trump got into power. Now Russia's the biggest fucking boogeyman ever. The thing is, you'll probably see the picture here that these are all fucking white middle-class looking college kids. Well, Scrum, speaking of, of white middle-class college kids, you, you remember the Otto Warmbier thing, right? I do, quite vividly. Yeah, like, this is a guy who... He was, like, in his early 20s, he was just kind of like a, a dumb college kid. There's nothing... Nothing remarkable about him. He goes to North Korea, he like, he steals, it was a banner, like a North Korean propaganda banner, because what he wanted to take it home. And then he fucking dies. <laughs> he dies, for fuck's sake. 
and like allegedly he did that. Well, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure he did it. Like, if if I had to 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 guess, if I if I had to gamble on, it, I'd say he probably did it because he's just being stupid. He didn't understand. But like, how many uh, how many SJW style articles came out, either decrying him for for like being a cultural imperialist or something, or not respecting their culture, alternating between that and making fun of him because his white privilege didn't work out because he wasn't in a white privileged society. He was in you know uh, a, a people's republic. Like fucking, it's all it's all glossed over, is what it is. Yeah, like here, here. Here's here's a tweet on it from Affinity Magazine. Watch whiteness work. He wasn't a kid or an innocent. You can't go to another country and try to steal from them. Respect their laws. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, kid, dumb college kid tries to take a souvenir from his holiday in North Korea and gets fucking tortured to death. Uh, that's not a tale of someone getting what they deserve. Salon called him an idiot frat boy while Huffington Post crowed about how his white privilege wouldn't work in North Korea. Uh, like, okay, comedian Larry Mil- Wilmore says it's just tough for me to have much sympathy for this guy. Like, what the like, what kind of sociopath would you have to be to be like, yeah, North Korea was right. This guy's a fucking idiot, and we, he deserves be- to be tortured to death. A a very woke one, apparently. Do you remember when the left was against waterboarding and how it was such a big deal that that Bush was was pro waterboarding? And how waterboarding was happening in Afghanistan and stuff. What the fuck happened to that left? I missed that. I, I missed the left when Bush was in office. They're they're coming down with the, the full extension of Trump derangement syndrome, in that because Trump is acting against North Korea, as we've seen in the past few days, things have been escalating. Um, they are doing the thing where they want to just be against Trump, so they're now for North Korea. I think it's that simplistic, really. I don't think it's any kind of concerted effort to undermine American culture or anything. They are just retarded people who want to be against what Trump is for. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, there's there's an article here. Um, U.S. general reveals how brutal w- war with North Korea would actually be. And I mean, without going into the details too much, it would be fucking devastating. Like, you, you could basically say goodbye to, to most of South Korea if there was actually a war between the U.S. and North Korea. And at the same time, like, it's always been, in my opinion, a, a point of of contention that North Korea has been allowed by the international community to be as bad as it has been. Like, it, this is Nazi regime level of bad on North Korea's part. And at least back then, uh, the Western powers had the spine to say, no, I, we don't want to go to war, but we got to go to war and we got to stop this shit because it is just blatantly beyond the pale of what government should be allowed to do to their people. North Korea is at that level and has been at that level for like 50 years. And Americans are like, nah, that's okay. They can just keep brutalizing everyone. Like it's it's been, on, on the one hand, it's been just a massive disappointment, like a, a moral failing on the part of, of you know, the US and the UK and and Canada and, and France and Germany and, and all these other nations that, that claim to value democracy. It's been a massive moral failing on all their parts. On the other hand, though, the actual practical realities of war with North Korea would be just as bad as as the current situation. North Korea is left on life support by China. The big problem here is China. China wants to keep millions of refugees from pouring across its eastern uh, its eastern border. The, that China is the factor that keeps North Korea alive. China is its biggest trading partner, its biggest financial backer. The big problem is that war with North Korea would probably mean war with China. That's what's caused the international community not to be able to act. China also has the um, enjoys the buffer zone between U.S. friendly um, South Korea and uh, North Korea. They, they don't like America on its doorsteps. See, I I would have agreed with you like ten years ago, but I recall. Do you remember? Um, what was it? five or six years back, WikiLeaks dumped all those international cables. Remember that situation? I do, yeah. Yeah. One of the cables was from China and it was like an internal Chinese memo. And they basically said that China would be, at this point, would be okay with a unified Korea with the South in charge and America on their doorstep if it meant that they didn't have to deal with a shit ton of North Korean refugees. So I think maybe that issue is with time just kind of being eroded away. I don't think the U.S. and China are are poised to go to war anytime soon. At least not the way they were like 50 years ago. 
I think if it did come to it, China would allow that to happen rather than have a, a an inst like a full on nuclear war. But it's just it's kind of ripping off that band aid. There's there's got to be a way to do it that doesn't like glass Korea. That's the thing. It's it, the problem is there is going to be a lot of collateral damage there if, if people if it does escalate to that level. But hopefully, I think the more robust approach that Trump is taking is superior. I think that North Korea doesn't respond well to being appeased. I think you have to threaten it, and they. I think the North Koreans aren't stupid, and they know how that power dynamic works. And they know if push came to shove, that they would all fucking die because of their brinkmanship and stupidity. And they back down. You've seen them back down. You, you've seen them come to these Olympics. I mean, they only come to these Olympics, I think, because the US started playing hardball with them, and they wanted some international sympathy. That's, there's a bigger story here. I mean, North Korea has been um, puffing its its cheeks for years now with like, oh, I'm, I'm going to nuke you, I'm going to nuke you, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And uh, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> as tempting as it would be to go to go look at Kim Jong-un's face and tell him, do it. Do it, faggot. I don't think you have the balls. Do it, you fat fuck. As <laughs> tempting as that, as that might be, it would be ter a terrible thing for the world to actually go to war with North Korea. I think it would be a terrible thing. And the best thing we could hope for is uh, a slow and gradual collapse of uh, the North Korean regime. Like, you, like you've mentioned, um, appeasement hasn't been working. It, it really hasn't. I mean, didn't Clinton make a str strike a quote-unquote deal with uh, with North Korea years ago with like, we're going to oversee their nuclear programs. Where did that go? W what happened to that? Well, I think that I think Clinton was too busy carefully overseeing Monica Lewinsky to, to pay much attention to that. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> just to wrap it up, I'd like to talk about this article here from the National Interest called Doomsday. Why we must prepare for the coming collapse of North Korea. Um, this guy seems to think that North Korea will be gone and reunified under southern rule in less than a decade. And it's going to happen not because of war, but because North Korea is going to have... Uh, North Korea is going to face a massive internal collapse. I, I think I think it would be a good thing overall. A reunification on the southern's term. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants reunification on the northern's term. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, I don't even think the North wants that, honestly. It would be so embarrassing for the North. Can you imagine, like, like suddenly opening up the borders and then all the North Koreans uh, storming into? Uh, okay, so this is this is what evil capitalism brings you: freaking, freaking ice creams and cosmetic surgeries. Wait, is that is that what South Korea is known for? Is ice cream and cosmetic surgery? Uh, I, I should, I should, I should. And that concludes uh, today's Dumping with Scrump. I would like to give uh, a special thanks to Lilith Lovett, who is our resident Korean talking about uh, Korean issues. Oh. <laughs> I'm not Korean. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Which part of half, like, Dev, which part of half Taiwanese do you not understand? I, I forgot. <laughs>